Hello and welcome to your next National 4-5 Computing Science lesson. In lesson 2, we'll be looking at the input process output model, which we'll refer to throughout this topic, and we'll also look at some first steps in Python programming as well. If you've completed S3 Computing, this lesson will be absolutely no bother to you. During these videos, you'll see opportunities to pause and complete tasks. If you have to complete a task on Google Classroom, you'll see the Google Classroom logo. You have to do some programming on Replit, you'll see the Replit logo. Many times you might have to do both. When we're doing programming examples, I'll show you how to do them in slides like this with code in the white box and the result or output of the code in the black box below it. I also might do some live programming on Replit as well. Last week I got you to sign up to Replit and create some folders, and I need you to sign in to Replit and then click the link in the assignment on Google Classroom. This will let you join the Replit Classroom, where you'll find all our programming assignments for this course. When you complete these, I'll be able to see your code and give you feedback. Make sure you check that these haven't been returned to you for changes also. Python will be our programming language that we use in National Computing Science. It's one of the most popular programming languages in the world today, and is considered to be an easy computer programming language to learn. There are many other programming languages, such as C++ and Java. Some programming languages are even built for specific purposes, like SQL, which is used to work with databases, or R, which is used for data analysis. A computer program is just a list of instructions, which is called an algorithm, that a computer has to carry out. Python will be the language we write this in so that the computer can understand what we want it to do. A common model that systems follow is the input process output model, and many of your basic computer programs that you write will follow it. The first step is input. What information are we taking into the system? Whether well, that's from a data source or something that the user types in. The next step is process. What do we do with this information? Do we change it or make new information based on the input? Finally, we have the third step, which is output. What information do we send back to the user of the program? This might involve displaying something on the screen or saving something to a file. To output information using our programming language, we need to use the print function. The print function displays text on the screen. To display text on the screen, we need to put it in the brackets of the print function. To display a line of text, we write it inside the brackets and inside speech marks. A line of text is known as a string of text in programming. Look at the code example below. To display the words national computing, we place them inside the print function's brackets and inside speech marks. When we run the code, it will display the string of text on the screen. Let's look at that on Replit. So we type the print function and then open a set of brackets. Notice that Replit automatically completes the brackets for us. And then I'll open speech marks using Shift and 2. And again, REPL automatically completes these speech marks for us and lets us type inside of them. I'm going to type National Computing and then hit Run. You can see over in the Python console on the right hand side that the words National Computing have appeared. Now it's over to you for a programming task which you'll find on your Replit classroom assignments. Pause the video here and use the print function to display the string of text I am programming with Python and then hand in the assignment on Replit. Make sure you check for any feedback that I give you. You can resume the video when you've completed this. In computer programming, we use variables to hold our information to use later. This could be text, numbers or other values. We use lots of variables in our programs to hold information and the data that they hold might change as the program runs. A variable has two parts, an identifier and a value. You can think of an identifier like the name of the variable or a label on a box. It should be meaningful and describe what the data is holding. For example, if you are holding the date of birth of a pupil, you should call the variable pupil date of birth. A variable also has a value, and this is the data that is going to be stored. In the previous example, the variable with the identifier pupil date of birth might have the value 
2005. Creating variables is a fundamental process in computer programming, and it's important that you understand this concept as it's the one fundamental building block on which all programs are based. We'll write identifier and value pairs in order to create our variables. We're going to use a variable in our program. It's a good idea to declare it at the start. This is called initializing its value. Setting up a variable with an identifier and value is called assignment. In the code example below, we have a variable with the identifier name and the value of Mr. McWhirter. The equal sign is used to assign the variable. Notice how our output says none. Watch what happens when we run this program on Replit. Type name equals Mr. McWhirter and click run. Our Python console goes blank, nothing happens. This is because we only stored the value inside the variable, we didn't actually do anything with it. And remember, to display something on the screen, we need to output it, and to output data, we need to use the print function. Notice that when we use the print function with a variable, we do not put the variable identifier inside speech marks. Let's look at this in Replit now. So the first thing I'm going to do is print out the value name. Notice how in the console it says Mr. McWhirter. However, if I put the word name inside speech marks, all that happens is it writes the word name on the console. Now it's over to you. On task 1.3 on the Replit assignments, I want you to declare and assign a variable, then display its value on the screen. Pause the video and resume once you've handed in the assignment. In this lesson, we've looked at the input process output model, which many systems follow, and how we would use the print function to output information. We've looked at the purpose of variables, their identifier and value pairings, and how to use them in Python. In our next lesson, we'll be looking at the different data types of variables in Python.